Hello, good evening. Thank you for joining me again. So this evening, I would like to introduce you to a friend of mine, uh, Olivia. Th this over here is um, Olivia the Orchid. So there's the top of her and there's a bit more of her. And she's going to sit next to me while I'm talking. So Olivia was given to me about 18 months ago. And when she was given to me, two thoughts went through my head. Thought number one was, wow, that's beautiful. She will look lovely in my study. I will enjoy having her there. And the second thought was, but she won't last long. I am so good at killing houseplants. And that is true. I have lost track of the number of houseplants I have killed over the years, usually, I admit, through total neglect. And I thought, if I can't even keep something like a busy Lizzie alive, what hope do I have with an exotic plant like an orchid? But as you can see, Olivia is doing okay. Regularly in the last 18 months, Olivia has produced flowers. The flowers have stayed and been beautiful for quite a long time and then they have died away. The first time it happened, I was a bit nervous. Had I actually managed to finish off yet another house plant? But after a couple of months of being dormant, a new flower spike began to grow and new buds began to appear on the flower spike and those opened into flowers that were just as beautiful as the ones that had been on Olivia when I first got her. Over the last 18 months, I have discovered something about Olivia. I have discovered that despite the fact that she is an exotic plant, what she needs is exactly the same as any other plant, warmth, light and water in the right combination. She may need them in a slightly different combination from if she were a cabbage, for instance, but basically their needs are the same. Watching a plant grow, flower, die back and then begin the cycle all over again has on several occasions given me a place to stop and reflect. And my reflecting today has been about what it is that I need. What are my equivalents of warmth, light and water? I think for a human and for other animals too, there are two different ways of looking at this. One, a bit like a plant, is that in practical terms, we need water, food, clothing and shelter, just like a plant leading, needing light, water and warmth. But if we had only those things, I don't think we would really experience what Jesus calls fullness of life. So today, I looked at my day and tried to find those things which had brought me fullness of life and to admit to those things which had not. I confess, I did not find fullness of life in trying to pick something up that was in fact too heavy for me. I didn't particularly find fullness of life in clearing up the bits of mouse that the cat left behind after having a bit of a chew in the kitchen at lunchtime. But I did find fullness of life in connecting with other people, both those that I live with and those that I've met on screen or through emails. I definitely found fullness of life shoveling compost around my garden. And although she may not believe it, I did find fullness of life in helping a friend with something via a video call. And I did find fullness of life in simply being quiet, sitting in the presence of what I would call God with a cat on my lap. I am not entirely certain whether Olivia the orchid knows whether she is experiencing fullness of life or not, but we do. And I think it's really important that we identify what it is that brings us fullness of life and make sure that we get some of it, especially now. So as ever, I'm going to finish off with a prayer. And as ever, if you would like to make it yours, feel free to stick an amen in the box and maybe even tell me what it is that brings you fullness of life. Father God, help us to work out what it is that brings us fullness of life and to work out ways that even with the restricted life we are living at the moment, that we can connect with those things. Amen. Thank you for joining me and Olivia. See you again tomorrow, I hope. Bye for now.